turn on the torch, light up the flame, time to melt some glass, my friends. There you are, here I am to explain, to teach, and create. Again, and again, and again, and again. Um, I just got really excited about something, and I got to share it. Got to, got to, got to share it. And it uh, has to do with diacroic, but if you don't have diacroic, just take that step out of the mix. And the diacro, again, is just a piece of uh, sparkly, glittery glass, mirrored glass, and it has two colors, one that's reflective and one that you look through the light and you can see a different color. Well, anyway. Most of mine is scrap. I do not know the, like, Sienna Gold or whatever, the two names, because I got it about 20 years ago. And, yes, it's uh, COE 33 Pyrex. And it took me a long time to finally figure out what I had to do to it to make it work for me. And I've been playing with it and been playing with it. And I've gotten pretty good results, as you can see here with this lizard. And if you haven't noticed, with my new torch, I now have a Marver and heat shield. And I'm going to tilt it down into the shine here. And you know, that might work for us. I'm going to see something here. And you might see a little bit more clarity, but I doubt it. But I'm going to try it for a little while anyway. Um, and that heat shield, so that... The, it takes care of infrared, it takes care of um, the heat itself, so I can tilt it down and guard my face from sunburn, <laughs> literally. Anyway, now, again, what I'm going to be doing is my normal technique for doing the, uh, the dichro to begin with, but I'm going to take it up a notch, kick it up a notch, whatever you want to call it. You'll see what I'm talking about very, very shortly. Um, this gives a little bit more depth to the diacroic instead of just being flat like I've done before. And as you can see in this one, the backside is concaved. And that's what this is all about. It, it, I'm going to be doing a dolphin. And it's going to look like, let me see if I can get the tweet, if I can never tweezers around when you want some. But there it is, very similar to this. And the backside, again, is concave, and it gives you more. All right, I broke it, not, not majorly, just the tail off of it. But I'll get back to that in a minute. But you can see that it gives more diachroic all the way around the body, looking like it's all diachroic, which is pretty cool. And again, I'll get to that tail here after. Let's get one thing done, and then I'll... Fix the other one while you're watching. Stupid me. I was just so excited. Had to pick it up. And it was still warm, so I couldn't touch it with my hands. Butterfingers me. I build most of, most of this stuff with me in mind. I'm a clutch to begin with. So there. Okay. Now, again, what I'm doing is getting enough pressing down a Maria that's going to cover the whole piece of diacroic. The film side up. And you can tell because the reflective side goes right to the edge. And then what you're going to do is you're going to heat up that whole mass of the Maria and press it down into the dichro. And then heat up the dichro a little bit and press it down one more time just to make sure it sticks there. I also have right here some turbo cobalt sitting here waiting. And what I usually do is coat just the back side of the diacro. Okay. Now what I'm going to be using to make the concave shape is um, a marble mold. But if you don't have a marble mold, if you have, you know, a stainless steel measuring spoon or something like that, that should work it because you're not really sticking it in there for long periods of time. You're just pressing it in and should work. Okay. Now here's where this will come in. I'm going to tilt this back up for a little bit because I need to get to the marver without having to work it too much. And now I'm going to marver. Let me flatten that out a little bit too. That'll come in handy in the long run. Um, 
I'm going to marver and flatten it down to the edge of where I put the color because that's the edge of where the dichro is, okay? Just keep rounding it in until colors right to the edge of the color. I mean the the clear is right to the edge of the color and that means you've got the dichro covered from one edge to the other. And it, you can even make it a little bit more round than it was because it was a square when I first started. Anyway, um, now the next step, take the handy dandy high tech glass cutters <laughs> and nip it. Now I'm going to put a cold weld there and come across with another cold weld on the other side so I can melt this all in and make it look good. Oops. Some crap on the end of that thing. Let's get that out of there. There. Okay. Now let's get this in. Down on the bottom of the, where the color is. Heat it all nice and even until that whole divot that you got there in the middle becomes nice and round. And again, you're warming up the whole piece of glass. It is a three-dimensional object. You want to keep it warm anyway, but that'll help melt that whole divot to where it will round out instead of round in. See, there it goes. A little bit more. Okay. Now it's ready for work. And this is where it's going to get interesting. Some people call this a bowl push. I just call it a push. But I'm using it for a good purpose. Heating it all in and putting it in the marble mold and pressing around it. And that's causing the concave and and making it looks like you got more dichro in there than you actually did. Okay. I'd make a good turtle as it is. If you wanted to do that, but this time around, I am going to do a dolphin, just like the one that I just broke, but I'm going to fix it before you finish watching here. Okay, and the idea is to heat up all of it, but mainly in the middle, start to stretch, and as it stretches, it keeps sort of concaved around there. This one's a little bit bigger than the last one I just did. So it's going to look cool. I'm still stretching. This over in my left hand is going to be the tail part. Down there. Almost looks like it should tur be turning into a lizard, but I'm not going a salamander, but I'm not going to. It's going to be a dolphin before I finish. Set that down for just a second. I got to do two things at once. When you got your hands full, I guess that's where it would come in handy to have the uh, the wet pellet can. But I never did do the wet pellet can. Okay, now I'm going to round this out just a little bit more. And let's see what color could I use? Contrast color for the fins, tails, and so on and so forth. Let's see what we got. Here. And there's your dolphin shape. Very nice. And it's ready to go. Now, I'm going to use this. I used it on the last one. I'll use it on this one too. It's a good contrasting color. Not a, it's a good complementary color. So it'll do the job quite nicely. And the dorsal fin, of course, is where I usually start on these guys. And I put in the uh, two front fins. What you're looking at right now is the back side of this dolphin. Just the way I had it in my hands. But you'll see it finished. Again, I... Portions are just a little bit 
in front of the door the dorsal fin is where I put these fins and then in front of that of course you got the nose and the eye and this is what I want to say almost a, an epiphany happened using this concave for me and what it can be used for instead of putting a bale on top putting a bale loop right here in the back that's the next step that we're going to do hot nah of course every piece of glass I got has a little nub on the end we'll take, we can take care of that right just in case that's a piece of silver or gold I'll set that to the side now again this is where I'm going to put the bale from one side of the concave to the other Looking good so far. Now I'll back in, and this dolphin is done. And then I'll do finish to fix the other one. There we go. Finish off the fins. Ha ha ha. Oh, not with that one. Wrong one. Right one. to explain. And I know dolphin fins go side to side, but on these I sort of put it a little bit forward and a little bit back, but they're going top and bottom instead of side to side. And that's because it sits better on as a pendant piece. Okay. There we go, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in the oven. Don't have it turned on yet, but it, it's going to go in the oven anyway. There you go. Now let's fix that other one and put it in the oven. There is it. Now we're going to put it on the nose here. right on the nose. Warm it back in of course because it is a cold object. And here is part of the fin so you might have to add some. Actually I'm just going to go ahead and do a new fin. It'll work. Warm it all in. This is one of the things you gotta learn how to do. When you think you've done it long enough and there it went uh, another piece of that tail came off okay and you think you've done it long enough you got to do it a little bit longer and you'll start to see when it becomes warm enough is that the edges you can put the put it near the edges and they become a lot more pink than just then you know you're up to up to temp and you can melt it without it cracking on you and I know you guys use a lot of soft glass so it's a totally different feel for you than mine. I use Boro. I can't help it. I love it. It's a lot more forgiving. Not trying to tell you to give up your soft glass, but hey. I've done a little bit of everything. I've done soft. I've done, uh, I've even done some quartz work. I actually took beach pebbles and melted them down and made figurines out of them. It's on another video. Type in my name and, and, and quartz and you'll find it. Okay? Um, 
one point in my life, I actually even did neon signs. So I've done a little bit of everything dealing with glass, except furnace work. One of these days, I'm going to get out and do some furnace work. I haven't done it yet, but doesn't mean that I cannot. Okay. Now, oh, yeah, that's what fell off. The bale in the back. So we got to do another bale, too. That's, you know, the stress happened when it cracked. I mean, when I heated it up. I was wondering what fell off. Okay, here we go. Repairs are fun to learn how to do, too. And I guarantee my work. If something ever happens to it, you get it back to me. I fix it. You have to pay for postage, but I will fix it. Free of charge. And get it back to you. You have to pay for postage both ways, I should say. <laughs> that gives me two things. Finds out where my weak points are, and I get visitation rights for some of my work that I haven't seen in forever, which is cool. I love it. I love it. I love my glass. I can't help it. It's just the way I am. And there you go. I, I repair on a dolphin, and those. I think it'll it'll hang really well that way. We'll see. But I had to show you because I hadn't done it before. But sometimes you got to hit while the iron's hot and show somebody so that other people can get the whole ingenuity out of it too. Um, again, if you don't have a marble mold, if you have like a stainless steel concave cup, like a measuring, measuring spoon, that should do the trick. And then you could take a smaller measuring spoon and press it in there like, and then you got that concave look, and then you could stretch it out. Um, that might help. You've got it. Sometimes ingenuity is your best friend. You got to, if you don't have, you know, if you can't be with the ones you love, love the ones you're with. In other words, if you don't have the, the high expensive, really, you know, top of the line tools, use what you got. And you can see that I do get a lot of good results from very simple tools. Graphite rods. Yes, I do have some of the, even these aren't the best in the world, but they do the trick. You just, sometimes you, you can make do. Sometimes you can't. Um, I'm babbling on. Thank you very much for being there. Click like, click subscribe. I'm glad I'm over a thousand now. I'm, I'm almost up to 200. 1,200, which is moving along quite nicely. Took me forever to get the first 1,000, but the second 1,000 looks like it should be in the next six months or so or less. Who knows? We shall see. Thank you very much. And as always, enjoy your day. And Carpe Vitro.